Okay, uh, yes. Uh, should I go to Kowalski before or Andemet? Is it related to this one? Uh, just a follow up for nothing else, like approach. So, are we, are like, are you planning to use the hybrid way? I mean, wave two and three? Uh, or, for me? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking like uh, completely Web3 for the employee employer part, like building a, a React phone team that interact with the smart contracts. Okay. It doesn't have to be much. a Web2. You can still create your web app and you can make it a Web3. You can use the MetaMask and everything to log in. You don't have to incorporate the Web2. I think you meant to create when you say web two, I think you meant the login and sign up, right? Is that no, what no, no, like we could uh, we could use uh, the wallet to authenticate users, but uh, I mean, like uh, to define the like ranges the user has to operate, like uh, storing everything in our smart contract, like every state on our contract might be like a very daunting task. I mean, mm -hmm. it might be a lot, so like we can uh, take that off chain and uh, uh like yeah, you can uh, use the... and everything yeah okay yeah yeah i was just saying that. okay okay you can you that's using actually ipfs is not a web you, you can still build web3 applications and incorporate ipfs because you don't store yeah. everything on chain yeah there are informations that you but that doesn't necessarily to, oh, okay. a web two. but Next. yeah uh, but okay, so one thing to add is uh, you can also have uh, the mobile app have two uh, logging parts, right? This is where the Web2 or comes into place. If this is also another possible way, I'm just I'm just mentioning to you guys some ways that you can use. So one one approach is you can have the mobile app and you can have it. You can give it like two different login systems, right? One could be for the employee and one, one could be for the employer. But, and the employer can interact with uh, the, the, the app and add some location and everything. So this information that the employee ha adds has to somehow interact with the smart contract, right? It has to update the smart contract. It has to get the data from the smart contract. So. So yeah, have that in mind when you start building, okay? And you can also have the employee login part where an employee uh, gives access to their location and and whatnot. Okay? So, so this is one part. Yeah. On that note, like we might have to use uh, a web two for that maybe. Like there is no, I think, maybe. no based authentication. Like I, I don't, I don't think of like a way of like role based authentication using like the user's address, public address. So yeah, you're right. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, okay. the concept of wave two might come into place. But yeah. but I would say I, for me, I would prefer the that the one building the dashboard. So that is more more secure and more easy to for the like as a system that's more easy to use. For you to build, it might be harder for you guys, but if you think about it as like a final product, having a dashboard for the employee and maybe a different section where an employer interacts is really good for the business. But yeah. Uh, okay, yes, Kowalski. <clears throat> okay, uh, actually my question is, seems uh, basic, but for me, I, a little bit, I'm a little bit confused on creating, uh, establishing the tools locally. So I was trying to install the profile using the NPM, but uh, it didn't uh, uh, install correctly. It says uh, kind of uh, uh, deprecated message. So uh, okay. I am a little bit confused on how the steps just uh, since I'm new for this yeah. kind of uh, thing is. So uh, can you suggest to me what to do? I think when we install the truffle, it will it, it will bring kind of templates which contains contracts and other, so that uh, we can write the code on the contract folder. And uh, so I was uh, watching such kind of uh, steps, but uh, still I didn't get it. Yeah. So if you successfully 
uh, initiated a travel project, then yes, you'd have uh, you'd get some starter code. That's the contract and the script, maybe the not the script, but yes, the contract. But um, today, so we are going to go. Uh, you we're going to follow the hard hat. If you want, you can follow that, and maybe you can see what mistakes you've found. It's somehow the same, in a way, uh, installing hard hat and truffle. The in the first initial part is the same, but if uh, we can go along uh, the session together, and if that doesn't work, we can maybe discuss about it. Okay, thank you. Have you used the official documentation? Guys, always go with the documentation, because I know that it might be cumbersome to, read, to go through the documentation, but it saves you a lot of time like, and a lot of headache. Just follow the documentation to get you started. Okay. Uh, yes, and Donat. Uh, it's just uh, for the capacity. So, like, uh, I I also like had a problem with while installing Truffle. The problem was uh, it requires a specific uh, Node uh, version. So, like as you said now, just like following the documentation is uh, like uh, very important because like that's where I uh, know like it requires a Node version between twelve and sixteen not above 16 uh not below uh 12 so i have to like change it to the specific node uh, version in order to install truffle so maybe like see your node version is between those uh ranges and if it's not like use nvm and install the preferred uh, node version and try to reinstall it Yeah, exactly. So point proven. So the documentation should usually like update themselves whenever there is a new change. Right? So instead of reading a blog or an article that doesn't update, whenever a new feature is updated, uh, to get you started mostly, just use this documentation. Right. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Um, does that answer your question, Kowalski? Or yeah, I will check that. Uh, if there is some other, uh, I will contact you uh, and that. Yeah. So. Okay. Sure. Great. Um, okay. Uh, yes. Anyone else would like to share? <clears throat> so how's it going? Let's have one more person and we can start the tutorial. I like to hear from. I'd like to hear from someone that hasn't, that I haven't heard their voices. From. Take a seat. Uh, would you like to say something? No, okay. Maybe Gennet, are you here? Okay. Uh, yes, okay. yes. Oh, uh, okay. You're here. Um. Oh, is it Gennet? Okay. Oh, hi. Yeah. How's it going? Uh, it's great. I'm trying to understand the problem more. And I've tried to install some of the things they are creating a wallet. But uh, I don't get more time to uh, read through it. And uh, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. Uh, just make sure that you are uh doing so make sure to work on it start 
I, I, I have already started uh, last so night. Today because uh, you're... Yes. Hello? Hello, I can't hear you. Is it my side? Gonna... Run out of... Time. I think you're breaking up, Nardos. Yes, I can't hear her. Project. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yeah. smart. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, apologies. Uh, okay, you were saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I was trying to work on it. Uh, but uh, I am on the task one. Uh, I try to understand the uh, idea and uh, some. Uh, it is new for me, that's why. But I, I'll try my best. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all right, but it's okay. Uh, okay, so has anyone managed to do the t tutorial on the zombie thing, on the zombie site? That's a good way to, to it's a fun way to get you guys introduced to Solidity. Have you tried signing up to Crypto Zombies? <laughs> the Crypto Zombie. No, you guys have not. Yeah, I imagine because uh, not yet. Okay. Mm. So this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just make sure to go through that. Uh, and uh, it gives a great introduction to Solidity. It's a fun way to interact and uh, to get started. There's also the starter example code. Um, yeah, Mohammed. Yeah, oh, Mutanan, I would love to see your crypto uh, that you got, the, the zombie that you got at the end. Uh, let's, let's make sure that everyone is interacting and using the tools that are provided uh if it would be nice if you could just randomly uh, just uh send the screenshots of your zombie in the random channel on the slack okay yes ma'am okay go ahead mohammed or is that am i audible or Okay, I thought I was bringing up again. Yes, maybe, but that was a mistake, maybe. Yes, can you hear me? Ah, yes, we can hear you. I think, uh, do I have a deck on the internet? So if that happens... Uh, I can hear you. We can hear you, Mohammed. So okay. Uh, basically, yesterday I was absent due due to some uh, internet issues, and um, I didn't go through uh, the work week document, and um, I kind of uh, built a general idea about the this week project, which is building. Uh, 
smart contract on top of uh, Ethereum blockchain. So um, the steps that have been introduced yesterday, uh, could I get them or um, all of them are listed in the week document? Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Um, so I, 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 my question was uh, yesterday I was absent and uh, I couldn't uh, attend all the sessions and I kind of missed, um, I'm, I'm kind of missing uh, the, the provided tasks. So uh, the, is there all in the week document or there's some uh, initial or other tasks that have been introduced yesterday? Um, okay, yeah, uh, sorry about, about the issue that you're facing. Okay, um, I think you can find everything in the document, but to go over what the tasks are is just for you to start with the un your understanding of Solidity and start working and start engaging with Solidity programming language and to get you understanding of the Ethereum language, the whole Ethereum uh, blockchain technology and how Ethereum networks work and how the Ethereum virtual machines work. That was uh, the first task that you need to do is to understand this whole feature and to um, to, to get an understanding of these things and uh, and also to follow the the zombie thing I was talking about to follow the crypto zombies uh, site. Sorry. Yes. Uh, can, can, can you repeat? Sorry, uh, my internet is not. So can you repeat uh, what you said? Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, it's alright. It might be from my side also. So I don't know. Uh, okay, so uh, you have to understand about. The Ethereum blockchain and what, uh, how it works, and what the Ethereum network is, and how what e Ethereum virtual machines are, and how they work, and uh, just have an understanding. So in task one, all you need to do is have an understanding of these things first, and then you go and then you follow the uh, Crypto Zombies uh, tutorial. It has some simple tutorials where where it gets you started on the Solidity programming language. And you, and then after doing that, you can use the Remix IDE. It's an online IDE that you can use to interact with the Ethereum blockchain using Solidity or any other um, the, uh, so smart contract language. And to so in task one, you have to read and follow the tutorial and then uh, play along with the it, the Remix IDE, and then you somehow create uh, a report or uh, your understanding of this the tools that you have worked with and have how what you understood so far. So the, in task one, that's going to be the overall things, and that's the main uh, activity that you can that is required. And then in task two is. Wait, this is what you mean, right? This is, am I answering your question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so in task two is that you set up a smart contract, right? So after four, following the smart contract tutorials and after following the example smart contract uh, pro uh, resource provided that is solidity uh, uh, tutorials i mean example just codes and that's a best way to to be in introduced to the language it has different um your intro is not good Can't. examples i can maybe
and you guys the link um, sorry, it has Marcus. um I think uh, a starter course. code for how you can interact with the solidity yes i was trying to switch off uh to switch to another meter am i audible yes hopefully yeah okay so after following those tutorials you create uh, your smart contract, right? So you use the remix to set up a simple uh, smart contract. You can follow yesterday's session that was really great, that was given in the afternoon. That was really great to, to get you started on the remix. And then today we're going to, uh, you go, we guys are going to have the local environment set up here. So this tutorial is going to be about setting up the hard hat. So uh, you can use uh, Brownie, hard hat, or travel to Brownie is a Python-based framework that you can use to create smart contract. And Hard Hat and Truffle are both JavaScript-based uh, frame, uh, uh, frameworks that you can use uh, to write your uh, smart contract. Uh, okay, so those are they are the development environment that you can use to develop your smart contract. And then uh, there is this starter code that is really going to help you understand how you're going to implement this week's challenge and how you're going to actually implement the location and uh, location of something, like how you track the location. Um, so there is this refrigerator uh, code that is provided. So so that one is actually, it will, uh, if you guys go through that, it's going to give you a much understanding and how you are going to implement this specific challenge, how you're how you can track uh, the location and how, what what are the ways that you can um, what are the commands that you use in your smart contract to define if if your smart if an employee is within the range or not. So it's best it's really good uh, to follow that. Uh, it will get you guys started. And then that's the in task three, right? In task two, you for you set up your local environment and start working on your smart contract. So this is where you write your smart contract that meets your objective. And then tomorrow, we're going to provide you guys uh, a, a starter code. So you were supposed to build a mobile application or a, a D app that, that is a mobile or a web D app, and you were supposed to create a front end and back end. But um, since this is this whole thing are new concept good for you guys, we don't want you to suffer. and. We don't want you to waste more time on when I'm creating the mobile app. So we're going to provide you guys a starter code, right? So this is going to be given to you guys tomorrow, and we'll have a whole session about it tomorrow. So uh, that will get you started on the mobile app. And maybe if you use, if you're going to create a web dashboard, that's also going to create, to get you started on that. And then, yeah, and then you integrate this, these two things, right? You integrate the mobile application with your smart contract and then you you taste it you deploy it and you taste it so so yeah this is over the overall project i hope i was not bringing up this thing Mohammed, yes thank you? you it's clear now okay good um all right so uh, if you guys don't have any more question we can <clears throat> We can start with the tutorial. Uh, let me just. Okay, good. Uh, you can see my camera now, right? Okay, uh, so uh, we we're going to follow the the hard hard hat official documentation tutorial. Uh, you guys can follow along with me. I, I'll sing. We can make the follow along session. You guys can try it at the same time. Uh, those of you that prefer travel, uh, feel free. Just go ahead and use travel. You don't have to switch to hard hat. Uh, this is uh, something that. Um, that I prefer to use because it has more functionalities and it suits my personal preference. And you actually don't need another uh, 
testing platform like Ganache to a third party platform, it, uh, Hard Hat also has its built in uh, testing platform. So you don't need to use uh, Ganache when you are working with Hard Hat. So that's why I prefer Hard Hat. Uh, you guys can also use Truffle. It makes it easier for you guys to create the the parameters that are, you are going to use to interact with the front end. So Truffle also has its own functionality and its own um, advantage. But to, for today's session, we're going to focus on hard hat. OK, uh, so you guys have seen the documentation. Uh, yeah, we're going to follow. We're going to follow that. So um, so yeah, uh, it says that hard hat has its built in uh, network, <coughs> which is which is an Ethereum network that's locally designed for development purpose. So it has like most of the things that you use on Remix, almost everything. And then it's built, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and then it's you can interact with it locally, right? So it has, it lets you uh, develop <clears throat> your smart contracts. It lets you uh, run and test your smart contract and also deploy your code. So uh, you can use Hard Hat to deploy your contract locally. Just it's a temporary, uh, it's a temporary way. But before actually uh, deploying it on the test and it and everything. Uh, this is really good for security purpose, like I mentioned yesterday. Um, since uh, deploying a smart contract on the public network, anyone can have access to it. Anyone can see the code, and anyone can manipulate with it or can can do anything with it. So before actually having that, um, having a, a fully secured smart contract, it's best not to do that, like not to deploy on the public network. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, so hard hat allows you to deploy it locally and before actually interacting with the public and lets you deb debug and test your code. So that's, that's one feature about uh, hard hat that I that I think is really good. Okay, so let's set up the environment, right? So first, uh, you have to have, um, I, I assume most of you have installed Node.js and since you've been working on creating front ends before projects. So uh, let's start with uh, installing Node.js. I've already have it on my system, so I'm not going to do that. So let's just let's just go ahead and start with the hard hat part. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do CD to my um and then I'm gonna CD. Um okay, so after that then uh so if you have your node set up and npm set up, you can just initialize your uh folder or directory here. So I'm going to use the yarn because I prefer using yarn when in development. You guys can use the NPM, but on the documentation, there's also an option to use the NPM. Uh, for now, I'm going to follow the yarn. Uh, so I'm going to initialize the directory. And it takes a few seconds to do that, but if my connection is really good, it's, it's going to finish. And, Um, okay, so uh, the reason that we need uh, Node.js is because uh, it's going to be, yeah, Hard Hat is going to be uh, using on on top of Node Package Manager. So you go, we're going to use the NPM to interact with the managers, uh, package managers, and that is why we need Node.js. Uh, it's suggested to use the NPM 7 or higher when you are working with that. So, <clears throat> and, then you, and then we create and we add the hard hat to our, to our system, right? So, <clears throat> right, so, uh, 
uh, heart heart is used for development when developing so uh, this is why we added the dev uh, tag here because we're going to use it when we're uh, developing the system it's okay it's going to take a few seconds um, Uh, wait, Antonix, can you guys hear me now? Was it before? Yes. Mohammed, or yes, is yes, it now? Yes, we can hear. Okay, I just saw a text that says you're in Tony's Okay, this yeah, is going to take a few minutes. Uh, okay, so this is going to take a few minutes. It's almost done, but if you guys have questions, maybe you can talk about it to the... Okay, I'm not going to write some complicated smart contracts here. This is just so that we can we can get started on the local environments. You don't need uh, Hopefully, since you guys have maybe have understood what smart contracts are and how they function on the Algorand uh, challenge, then that is going to help you in this, this project as well. Right, so here, this is this is uh, the function that this is the command we use to create uh, our project, our hard hard uh, environment. Right, so we I'm going to <clears throat> I want a, a template. Right, you can use JavaScript, you can use a TypeScript, or you can have an empty folder. But uh, why not just go ahead and create uh, some templates that maybe could give me an understanding. So, um, okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, hard heart has uh, is hard. It says that hard heart is designed around the concept of tasks and plugins, right? So we, when most of the functionalities that uh, you use in hard hats are in form in, are done in the form of plugins or in the form of tasks. So this is um, there are different functionalities or plugins that you can use for different functionalities. You can check out the the documentation uh, to get more of these functions. Um, okay, let's just wait for the. Yes. Just to follow up. Uh, what did you choose uh, when you like uh, use MPX? Uh, is that like JavaScript or TypeScript? To no, I, I, I just choose JavaScript. Okay, yeah. Do I have okay, to change so the project suite or like accept the? Uh, default uh, paths, it's okay. Uh, it's fine, just uh, uh, accept it, it's okay. You can just press enter, so it's done, or you can, I forgot to to press, to add the yes command at the end, that's why. It doesn't make a lot of difference, so. So, uh, so it's installing the hard hat toolbox here. This is a plugin that we're going to use. It's going to help us integrate with most of the built-in uh, functions that hard hat provides. Uh, so this is, ah, it's done. All right. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so this is, <clears throat> we have this uh, package that's going to help us interact with the, with the toolbox, right? So we also have another uh, libraries that uh, we're going to use to interact with uh, the hard hat environment but and also interact help us to um, interact with the front end that we're going to use so these are i'm only copy pasting this from the documentation you can get this from the documentation so these are the packages that is going to help us in building the the hard hat so 
I've actually al already built the installed the toolbox, so it's going. I'm also going to uh, in install the network and uh, trimeters. So and the eaters. This is going to help us interact with our smart contracts. So make sure to install this package. You can find it on the documentation. Can you, uh, you drop guys it can follow on log? Yeah. Because the the, the documentation just in. Yeah, this uh, is the link. Okay. Oh, but I can copy paste the command for you if you want. But this is the documentation. Follow it. <clears throat> okay. I hope you guys are also following uh, along. Uh, okay, so I think I see a question, Yarn. What does Yarn do? Uh, yeah, so Yarn is like mostly like NPM, right? You can, it provides a set of uh, command line, different CLI commands, and it's going to help you uh, interact with your packages. And yeah. You can also use NPM if you prefer, if that's, that's what, uh, does it work with specific languages or? On specific what? Languages. Languages? Well, yes, it's a it's a node package manager. It's actually, so yeah, you, you have to have node installed. Okay. Yeah, it's for. You can use it for JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, you can also use it for TypeScript, guys. It's not just for JavaScript. Uh, they did not use yarn in the document. Yes, uh, if you take a look, there is um, this button that shows um, the NPM. If you take a look, because yes. Okay, now that is the done. About the code snippets, uh, there is just it. Yeah. Yeah, please call me back in here. Yes, okay, so on the document, if you take a look at the commands, whenever there is a command, there is also, there's three buttons at the top that says NPM 7 plus, NPM 6, and yarn. You can choose yarn. But it, it really does not matter, you can use NPM. Okay, okay. They, they basically do the same thing. Okay, uh, so, so yeah, I think it has, uh, yeah, so I'm going to open this, uh, where am I code? Let me just share my VS code. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the, the starter code that's going to be provided when you first initialize a hard hat uh, environment. And these are, this are the default files that you're going to get. So you should be getting this uh, when you accept this one if you don't use your own. Yes, I'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, um, I installed the uh, Brownie, so uh, is it going to have any kind of similarity with this? Is, is, am, I, am I going to to benefit anything from this tutorial? I'm not, I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> or is it um, going to be completely different? Um, 
I hope you're gonna benefit in some way, but I yeah, they are, they are different environments. So you're they actually have you're gonna use Python for brownie, and you're gonna have Ganache for the testing environment. But here I'm gonna use JavaScript, and I'm gonna have its built-in feature. So I'm not sure if they have a lot of similarities, but I do hope that you get you do benefit from the, the tutorial. All right, yeah, it's, it is possible for me to to just install hard hat also, but um, on this side because I didn't do anything with Brownie yet. So, yeah, okay, um, thank you. Actually, I'm just I'm just saying for the purpose of uh, gaining knowledge, but you can feel free to use Brownie and ditch this tutorial. Okay, it, uh, it's it doesn't matter. All right, this is not a like a mandatory thing, so it's okay. Okay, um, right, so yeah, so uh, so when you when you're done, so you'll be uh, you guys will have this this um, this folder structure initially, right? So here it's it has uh, this default uh, a default contract that is <clears throat> this is provided, so this is a simple contract that that shows you the balance and you can withdraw it. So this is a simple small contract that that lets you understand what's or play around in solidity. So this is the contract that that you provide. So this is the so and these are the packages. So this is just our package manager and so the, on the script file, so <clears throat> so on hard hat you can you can create scripts to manipulate your uh, smart contract, right? So you don't ha always have to have uh, most of the functionalities on script. So on on the smart contract, allow you to have power over them. So there are ways when uh, when you are so this. Script just this one. Is for the deployment right so it's going to help you uh it's going to allow you to uh deploy your smart contract and uh, it's going to have some deployment um uh comments that you can you know right by doing updates or in any type of things so yeah so and a taste one so yeah this is another thing that you can Used to taste your your smart contract. Is, is that a question? Yes. Andrew. Yes. Uh, so can we write a script, a JavaScript, uh, like a script, and use it in our smart contract? Is that possible? Maybe not. Yes, uh, you can. I mean, this script. You when you're running the script, it's it executes so this specific one it executes your smart contract and yes you can you can do that and you can you can allow it to uh, have some functionalities in there but i think you meant like having a, a yeah, and using smart it in the yeah smart contract, right? actually um, it, right probably not yeah that's what i am like thinking because like oh, yeah. solidity Likes a lot of like programming language functionality, so uh, I was wondering if we like use the power of JavaScript to enhance our smart contracts and like uh, call scripts or uh, modules from JavaScript in our smart contract. I was I was just wondering if Red Hat, I mean Hard Hat, allows us to do that. So yeah, so it doesn't, right? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Um, so yeah, this uh, scripts are going to, you're not going to use this the functionalities of this script in your smart contract. This script are going to have power over the smart contract. So no, I don't think you can, you can use some part of the, the functionalities in the smart contract. Okay, yeah, makes sense, yeah. Right, because uh, those, they are, so, so yeah, so this, because, one thing you can see, you can notice is they are done using JavaScript and 
that those are two different languages, right? So uh, that's probably not uh, allowed or not. Yes. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you guys have installed the package and. Um, yeah, so yeah, this are the, this is the taste and this 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 one is the main uh, config file that shows you what your hard hat uh, file actually is like on the most of the um, packages that is installed or what is actually the about the smart contract. So we here we use solidity. Um, here we can provide the networks. So when we are like we talked about when we are tasting our when we are deploying our smart contract, hard hat provides its 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 users a local based uh, deployment, right? But you can also use the the tasting uh, the ganache or any other network uh, taste networks to deploy your smart contract, right? So you're gonna use that or you're gonna add that here in the config file. So the main functionality is of the config is going to this is going to show what um, your it's going to have the general description of the hard hat config file, the hard hat file. All right, so, um, okay, now let's go to the contract, right? Uh, so are we following along or? Um, okay, there is this internet, okay. The projects, okay, so yeah, the, the structure is that uh, this one is the contract that all all of your solidity contracts should go here. Just this is going to be uh, where you store your contract, and this is going to be a package manager that you have that you're going to use. So anything that related to Node is kept here. So and this one is the scripts. So this is where you write your scripts that can um, that can uh, implement the smart contract or have. Uh, if you want to interact with a smart contract in a better way, then you can have different scripts. And this one is where you write your tests. So this this one this is the test for the smart contract, right? So this is the default thing you find. So it has different tests for the deployment, for the withdrawal, or this is the withdrawal. So this is the function in the smart contract. So you can test your uh, deployment, the whole, um, scripts and how it functions and you can also taste your uh, solidity functions that you have written and this is the um, overall uh, config file for your hard hat project okay um yeah that's the recap okay so now let's go to the smart contract right so um as part so Okay, right. So uh, again, I'm following the tutorial, the documentation, and you guys can maybe, uh, let me just send you the link. You guys can follow along. So I'm gonna search. Okay, so this is right, so uh, this is how you uh, create the solidity, and I'm going to get the sample code from the documentation. Uh, so, so don't be scared. From, I'm only copying it from the from the documentation. Okay. Right, so yeah, this is so this is on the document. It's a simple contract that's going to uh, help you uh, understand. All right, so. Um, so this is uh, I'm always uh, I'm always going to start with the pragma, right? We are we have to define 
on which version of Solidity that our smart contract is going to run, right? So that's that's where we need, we always have to uh, specify that, and we also have to start with the license. So that's the first thing we need to do when we are uh, writing a smart contract. I'm sure you guys have seen that by now, but yeah. Um, okay. So if you uh, go to the documentation, then it says that this is creating a smart contract that implements a token and that can be transferred, right? So the tokens are, um, token contracts are most frequently used to exchange and store values. So we store values and tokens, right? Well, so we have different type of tokens. We have ethers, we have uh, algos, and we have bitcoins. Well, there are different, um, so they are store of values. So uh, token contracts are usually used to transfer or exchange these values or to store the values or to store the data that's that's some, somehow stored in our token. Um, all right, so, okay, so this is the the code that we've, okay. Have you guys copy pasted it? Yes, we have, I have. <laughs> okay, I feel like um, you're the only one here. Um, is there anyone I would like to hear from you guys? People right, so, okay. on the chat. Okay, uh, sure. Um, all right, so let's 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 compile our smart contract. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, we have uh, an error. Okay. Let me just remove this. Hmm. Okay, I have an error. Um, okay, this is unrecognized contracts and task. Wait, sorry. Are we supposed to run the folder, the contract folder, or a particular file in the folder? Have you, uh, what? Sorry, I did not get that. I said, are we supposed to run the folder itself, or a particular, or a particular file in that folder? Yeah, so it's fine. There is only one contract in the in the folder, so that's why I'm using that. Um, it, it's going to find the contract that is inside that folder. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so I've got this, some of the reasons why this might have created an error. Uh, 
か。So okay, that was a, a silly mistake that I made. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so this this has compiled our small contract, right? So it has um it says that it's successfully compiled one solidity file. So that's that's so that's how you compile your smart contract. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go over the main things about solidity here because I'm sure most of you have uh, understanding, but this is uh, the, the the starter code on the documentation. So this is going to transfer the tokens. So this is uh, one simple functionality here. So, but to understand, we can just go over the code, right? So here we define a contract and we set our um, variables, right? This is this is the state variable that we are going to use. So state variables are defined at outside of the function. So. These are state variables that we are going to use, and we have um, yeah. This is this is how you define uh, string values, and this is an, how you define an integer. So, so these are modifiers that you can uh, specify the availability of your uh, variables. And an event is so. This is an event. An event is um, so it's going to detect the um, an event in your uh, smart contract, right? It's it's going to happen within your smart contract. So uh, we have an event that says uh, message. It could we have different events in our function. It could be sending or uh, anything that's going to interacting with our smart contract. That's going to you can we can use that to uh, store it. You can use event to store those, and we have a transfer event that we're going to take a look. Right, so we have a constructor. So this is going to be initialized. So we are going to use and we are going to initialize it to uh, to get the balance and the owner of the smart contract. Right. So we use this owner. That's the owner is the uh, the one that's going to be uh, running the smart contract. Right. So this is going to be the sender. Mm, okay. So this is the function. Right. So on the f so this is how we define functions. Right. So um it's going to get the address and the amount from uh, that we have defined over here and after that it's going to pass take the argument and pass it to the uh, balance and if the amount is not enough and this, this is going to be a basic functionality this is just <clears throat> so if if it's not enough then do this and um yeah this is if it's enough then it's going to transfer the amount and and it's going to uh, decrease the, uh, or subtract the amount from the sender or the balance of the owner of this uh this smart contract uh person running this okay so and then it's going to emit this event and it's going to emit the transfer of the uh it's going to notify the application that the transfer has been done so this is the functionality of our smart contract, and then uh, and then you this is to get the balance of the so this function is to get the balance of right so this is to view so this is this only <clears throat> this is only executed to see the or to get the uh, balance of the account that we we are we have provided. So yeah, this is just this is the basic uh, smart contract that we used, and this is how we compile our smart contract. Uh, now let's take a look at tasting, right? So um, to taste um, the smart contracts, we're going to use the hard hat network. So the hard hat network is um, somehow uh, a replication of the Ethereum network that is built in. Right? It's not really, um, it doesn't actually contain the, t the networks, like the tasting networks or the main net or the taste net, but this is just a local network that's, uh, that has the Ethereum network built-in feature. So it comes with the built-in hard hats. Um, so it uses the default network, so we don't need to set up anything. So we don't need to set up uh, Ganache or anything. So, all right, so let's, we've seen the, we have a taste script here, right? So <clears throat> we, we could just remove that. 
and then uh, Pope Pest and the one we, that we can uh, test for this. The script. Um, we can create a couple. Okay. Um, right. So, and then we're going to copy and paste this. Again, this is from the document. So you guys, you can get it from the document. And then we can run the test. So uh, before that, uh, let's take a look at what this this test is. So Chai is um, a module that we can use to test our environment. You can use it uh, on travel or any type of environment that you're using. So it's going to help you taste your uh, Spark contract. All right. So and then, yeah. So so we we're also going to use ethers and. Um, Ethers, um, it's a built-in, but um, we have uh, imported it before uh, when we are importing packages when at the beginning, if you guys remember. Um, so we, that's why it gets the functions. So if we didn't import that, then this would be an error showing us. Uh, all right, so this is the test and we're going to um, run the test, right? So to run a test, you're just going to say, like, so it's going to show us if it has asked our tests that we've written or in. Okay, so now that our transaction or it's locked. So yeah, so the tasting is going on. So we can we can see that if it has passed the test or not. Right, so it did not pass our test, right? So what happened? Let's take a look. I think it deleted the look one. I still have to, okay. Right, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I was running two test files. Okay, so that passes the tests, right? So this is how you can taste, uh, you can have func uh, different functions to taste your smart contract and check that if you're, if it ha passes or not. So um, you, we could use this approach to taste our smart contract that we have built so far. All right, so, uh, okay, so the next step is um, to debug with hard hat, right? So uh, we're going to maybe, let's go to debugging. Uh, okay, so um, again, we have the built-in functions that's going to help us in debugging. So uh, we can have, uh, in Solidity, we can have the console.log, that's a JavaScript uh, function that lets you log uh, things on your console, right? You can also use use it on Solidity. And you can, when you are running your contract and when you are testing on hard, hard network, you can print a log message and contract on a variable. So this is the console.log variable, and you can use it directly in your Solidity code. Uh, all you have to do is just, uh, on your on your code on the smart contract, you, all you have to do is import it uh, somewhere at, at the top. So yeah, always make sure that don't confuse the JavaScript. It always comes after the pragma. So all right, so we have that, and that's going to help us uh, see our okay. okay. So, okay, so on the transfer functions here, we can, uh, here we can add the logs, right? Just 
if you want to debug and if you have uh, if, if you have an error here, you can use the console log and check that um, you might have you might be having uh, error. Sorry, it's going to help you debug on this function. You can also add it on the balance function, but this is only a return or a view function, so you might not need to have um, you, you might not need to debug the some functions. So you can use it when you are executing uh, important uh, tasks or uh, events. So uh, this is how you this is how you uh, log your uh, errors or messages on the document. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now let's run the test. Okay, it's uh, yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, I did not get the message right. I was supposed to. Okay, uh, right. So if I was using the addresses to taste these functions, like if I had two different addresses that if I put in different addresses to transfer tokens uh, to and from, then this would be showing me um, that I was transferring the uh, some amount of token from this balance to from this account to this account. So the, the reason it's not showing me that is because I'm not actually transfer into uh, any other account. I'm not doing that because it's, it's probably going to take one more time and yeah. Okay, uh, so the main and most important thing is that what we have to take a look right now is when we are deploying it to the net local network, right? So let's say that you have finished your smart contract developments and let's say that you have, uh, you want to deploy it, right? So you're not going to deploy it on the main net, so you're going to have the test net, right? So uh, I'm sure you're using Gorilla, but there is also, uh, I don't know if I'm, I can say it right, say Poly, uh, you can also use that um, to taste your uh, smart contracts. So, yeah. Um, okay, so now let's, uh, let's write a script that deploys our smart contract, right? So like you said, we, we use this, we use the script to, uh, to, to have a, uh, power over the smart contract, right? So this script is going to deploy our smart contract, right? So let's just, uh, without deleting, let's just copy and paste this here. All right, so this is again from the document that I'm using this uh, to, I took this from the document. Okay, um, that's, Um, before that, uh, we can also take a look at how to add a remote networks, like the one we said, we talked about the Gorilla and the different networks. So, like I said before, when we were uh, talking about the config file, uh, I told you this is where you add your um, config file, right? So, you're going to add the, the network that is going to, that we are going to um, deploy our smart contract on. Right? So let's say, let's use this um, Gorilla. So if you guys have Alchemy an Alchemy account, you can uh, use that, or you can also use um, the Chainlink faucet to fund your account. And the easiest one I prefer is the Alchemy because it, it gives better um, more amounts of tokens. Okay, so to get your, go to the Alchemy uh, URL, uh, alchemy.org. Let me just send you right there.
Okay, so we go, we're going to use the Alchemy to deploy our application. And uh, so if you guys uh, follow the link I just sent you and create an account uh, or create, create an account and create an application, then that application is going to give you a, uh, a, an API key. So we're going to use that to define our uh, when defining our network. Okay, so I've already created an, an account and um, and I already have uh, an API key. So this is going to be, okay, let me just go ahead and send you guys the, so in order to add a new network, or you have to follow the step. So I'm calling it uh, Gorilla. Uh, you guys can also have um, the default network, which is the hard hat provided. Uh, but if you want to test it on Gorilla, then this is going to be the URL, right? So if you have um, if you have the APIs key keys generated, and you can use this. So in, in order to, but make sure that your uh, hiding it on your env file and make sure that you're not pushing the env file with it. So for me, I was, I'm going to create a, an env file and and I'm going to store all of my variables here. So, so here you can store your alchemy API key and you go really private key. Um, you guys could just uh, substitute it and this is going to work if you going to, if you run the if you run it now, it's going to work. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do it here because <clears throat> I need those keys to be private. So uh, you guys can run this part of the the section on your own machine. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to run the to get you guys to go fetch your API keys so that right so now the difference is that what I did is when I've added the networks I can I can not I can not only just uh, run the script and deploy uh, our smart contract locally I can deploy it on the actually case network right so what I have to do is I have to specify the network name that I have given it here so um, so I gave it the Gorilla one, right? So you can keep naming your local uh, taste network, but this is going to be the official public network that you guys can use. And you can just uh, you can just use this and uh, to run on a, a specific uh, network and then you can run your deployment script. So this is how you'd be running it on. Uh, on the Gorilla, and it's going to be so after you have after you have set it up set up the um okay after you have set up the accounts and if after you've put in the this uh, keys then it's going to deploy it on the remote network uh right so yeah this is um so i'm not going to run it here right now but after you have um somehow uh used this um alchemy api keys and everything you can uh you can get it on the cli that where it's hosted right so you can get the address the account address that is hosted so if you uh, log into the alchemy and if you go to the dashboard then you could see your app deployed on the. Uh, if I maybe take a show you guys how it could be displayed after.
We can't hear you now, Chris, if you're speaking. I think you're on mute. Ah, yeah. Uh, okay, I just created uh, an, an app on the Alchemy dashboard if you guys didn't get that from there. But all you have to do is just add the name and the description and it's going to create you guys. Uh, and, and all right, let me just go over it again. Uh, so you add a name here. I'm just going to name it whatever and write something and make sure that you write, uh, your network is the gorilla one, right? So, or else it's going to be the money net and you're not going to get your, you're going to be, you might be um, losing some uh, gas money if you have uh, some tokens in your account on your main net. So let's just go and create uh, on the really taste network and then uh, so yeah this one and then you you get the API keys from here so you copy Can't paste this and the, then demo? the what the demo app like uh, the one that's like, created by default can't we use that I mean sure you can you can use this Uh, and then you can, yeah, you can get the API keys and then you can inject it in your code and it's it's going to uh, be building it, uh, deploying it on the Gorilla Taste Network. I just realized that it took us uh, way over the tutorial time. Okay, uh, let's, so the, yeah, that's the simplest, the simplest way you can set up your uh, development environment locally and uh, I can't okay uh, if you guys have any question you can yes so there are two API keys one is for the alchemy API key and the other is the gorilla private key so uh which is which? Like, uh, can you? So the API keys are just the ones you get from here, right? This yeah. one. And then the the Gorilla private keys are the ones you get on MetaMask. The address that you you get from your MetaMask. So like my uh, my address. So like I'll yeah, copy the your account public address. address and paste it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, get it. Thank you. Yeah. So <clears throat> so yeah, this is um this is how you guys uh develop and deploy smart contract using hard hard hat. Um if you guys have any question, you can also use like I said, you can use the different um different development environments for building your smart contract, but this for me, this is the best one, and uh, it's actually more required on the industry level. And a lot of companies are looking for someone that has more experience on hard hat. Um, okay, so uh, one tip. If you guys are um, maybe interested in smart contract, and if you guys are into the whole uh, testing and uh, taking the smart contract and developing the smart contract, then um, this would be um, a great um, medium for you to read. So uh, this, what Immutify does is that there, are, so there's this uh, concept of bug bounty. So this is when a person mm, looks for a vulnerability in a, in a system and reports that to the actual owner of the company, right? So what bug bounties does here in this case is taste the vulnerabilities of the smart contract and you actually get a lot of money for finding some vulnerabilities or finding some bug or finding some way in into the smart contract so if you guys um, are into the smart contract and if you guys take a look take a deeper look then you can go and follow the immutify um, post blog channel and where they where they post some, um, where hackers just hack a simple smart contract and get bounty for like uh, a lot of million dollars. So uh, this is something to kind of motivate you guys to get 
good at uh, building smart contracts. So here, if you take a look, so the Aurora lost like um, a lot of million dollars. And so this is one case where one user found, ah, so one user found an issue on the Aurora platform and, and then got um, paid like $2 million. And they also had another issue that was reported uh, less than six months ago. And so less than two months ago, if I'm not mistaken, and within two months, they lost a lot of million dollars. And imagine if you were that developer who found the bug and got actually paid this bounty money. And there are different, so what they, they do is just, They show you how they actually uh, penetrated the smart contract and what the vulnerability it kind of gives you a motivation to be to the end. All right. Uh, I hope that was not too much for you guys and uh, helped you get some uh, some things. So, Manal, maybe did you get some benefit out of the tour? Yes. Still yes. Here? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. I was trying also to 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 understand like uh, to go with through brownie still, but yeah, I think I got uh, some benefit in the end. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. So you can still go for the brownie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you, guys. Uh, have a great day. We have a, a session.